Hey, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mr. Odom, and this is lesson 13.1, Graphing Linear Equations. So we're going to start with a quote. It's at the bottom. It says, it is in your moments of decision that your destiny is shaped. So the video is going to pause here for a few seconds for you to reflect on that. And I'd like, to, I'd like for you to share thoughts, your thoughts with me on this quote. So the video will pause now. Okay, so we're back and let's get started. So section 13.1, there are common core standards um, that apply here and they can, you can see them up here. And then uh, this is called a KUD, what I would like you to know, understand, and be able to do. Notice that there are some vocabulary terms in this section, and I would like you to be able to know those definitions. So I'll pause the video when we get to those definitions and um, so you can write them down. Tools. So make sure you have your pencils, eraser, composition book. You know I can't do a video without saying that. And here's some other tools we might not have thought about. Self-control. So in the virtual world, an example of self-control might be, hmm, I am in a quiet place with my cell phone off and my computer games off and my Xbox controller is not sitting in my lap. Uh, responsibility. Examples of that. Um, yeah, I am going to spend this hour and a half that's been dedicated to, to me, dedicated time for me to do math, that's what I'm going to do. Engagement, well, how are you going to engage with this video? Um, are you going to watch it and take notes? Um, will you pause and even, even in times, not when Edpuzzle pauses, but other times when you might be confused and go back? Um, so how are you going to engage in this lesson? Cooperation. Please watch this video before you try the online assignment. Right? In communication. I'm communicating to you right now. How are you going to communicate to me? Uh, especially if you don't understand what I'm about to talk about. How are you going to communicate with me? So those are tools. You'll see them. I won't spend a lot of time talking about them. You may have other ideas about these tools as well, and I would welcome your thoughts on, the, on that, um, on each one of these. If you have some other thoughts about self-control, responsibility, engagement, cooperation, and communication. All right, let's move on. So as this slide says, this is important stuff for your composition book. So. Uh, in a moment, the video is going to pause and you're going to write down these definitions. Okay, so the first one is a linear equation. A linear line equation is an equation whose graph is, oh my goodness, a line. And then a line is basically made up of points. So that's what a line represents. A line represents a large set of points. And so the points on the line are solutions of the equation. Where else did we see solutions of equations? Hmm, let me think back. One of those most important chapters Mr. Rome talked about? Yes, chapter three. When we studied equations and we found a solution to an equation. When we're talking about lines though, there are many, 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 many solutions to the equations. And notice how many variables are in the equation. There are two of them. So I'm going to pause the video right now so you can uh, write down the definition of linear equations and then solutions. You would just write down the points on the line. Okay. Um, our solutions that would work. So the video is going to pause now. All right. So I'm back. And notice um, how can we take this equation and represent it with a line on a graph. And the way we do that is we pick three points. Does it matter which points you pick? No. That's, that's going to be up to you. I would recommend trying to pick easy points. What do I mean by easy points? 
So look at this. If I let x equal 1, then I have y, or I'm sorry, if x equals negative 1, then I have y equals negative 1 plus 1. That's easy math, right? We like easy math. So then I get this coordinate, negative 1, 0, which I can plot on the graph. So I pick another point. 0 is always a good one. Why? Because it'll make the variable go away. So then I have y equals 1. So here's that coordinate, and I plot that point on the graph. And then we just use 2. Pick 3, pick three values for x, and then figure out what y equals. So here, y equals 2 plus 1, or 3, which is what I have in the y column. Here's another coordinate. So then I go ahead and plot that point, and then I draw a straight line. You might need a ruler or something. Does your line have to be perfectly straight? No, mine never are, and that's okay. Just do the best you can. So that's how you can take an equation of a line, which is what we're talking about here. This is an equation of a line, and represent that line or show this line on a graph. All right, so let's move on. More important stuff. So here's an equation of a line right here. This one is y equals b, and b is just a number. It could be negative, it could be positive, it could be a fraction, it could be a decimal, okay? So y equals b is a horizontal line that passes through this point. So I only need one point when I graph horizontal lines, and I show that where that point is on the graph, and then I just draw a horizontal line through it. For vertical lines, we use the equation x equals a. And if x equals a, then y can be anything. So if y equals b, then x can be anything. So that's why that's a horizontal line. And that's why x equals a represents a vertical line. I plot that point. So if x were equals 2, then the coordinate would be 2 comma 0. I plot that point and draw a vertical line. And we'll practice that in a moment. Or you'll see that has already been practiced. I already did the work. <clears throat> so let's graph this equation, y equals negative 2x plus 1. How do we do it? I just picked three points. Mr. Odom, why'd you pick those three points? I don't know. I just felt like it. All right. I like picking zero uh, because of what I said before, it makes the it makes the term negative 2x, it disappears because anything times zero is just zero. So then I that's an easy point. X equals zero, y equals one. So where did I plot that? Did I plot that down here? Um, actually, I made a mistake on here. That's awesome. I love it when I do that. That should be boom. That should just be one instead of negative one. So that should be zero, one. So I plotted that coordinate. Here it is right there. Okay. Then I picked two. I don't know why I picked two. I just did. All right, uh, negative two times two, I know that's negative four, negative four plus one is negative three. So when x equals two, y equals negative three, and I plotted that point right there. And then finally I chose negative two, why? I don't know, it just seemed like the thing to do. Uh, but I didn't, you know, could you pick the number 372,561.49781? Yes, you could, but why make the math hard? You don't need to. The goal is just to be able to draw this nice straight line. Okay, so you can be creative and wild with your points, but you really don't want to create a lot of hard math for yourself when you're just trying to plot a line. Okay, so I picked negative two because I was I know negative times negative is positive, and I can do I know how to add four plus one. Even I know how to do that, and I get five. So then here's the coordinates, negative 2, 5, and you see that I plotted it here, and I just drew a straight line through there. So the equation y equals negative 2x plus 1 looks like a, this line right here in the coordinate plane. In any point that I pick on here, so let me pick 
this point right here, okay? What are the coordinates of that point? Well, I go to the right one, right? I go over one and I go down one. So that's one, negative one. And let's plug that in to this equation and see if that is an actual solution. So what, is, what, am I, what do I mean by that? Well, here's my X coordinate, my Y coordinate. So for Y, I get negative one. I just substitute. And then I put here two times one plus one. So negative one equals negative two plus one. And I get negative one equals negative one. Where did we do this kind of work at? That's right, that was in chapter three again, when we would solve an equation and then we would check our solution. We're doing the same kind of thing here. Here I'm checking to make sure that this is a solution, and it is. Yes, 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 we're excited, yes, okay? Let's move on. All right, so we're gonna graph y equals negative three. So then I plot the point, let me get this point, I go zero, that's my x coordinate, and negative three. So there's that point, I plotted it, and I just drew a horizontal line through it. And remember, x can be anything on a horizontal line, x can be any number, we don't care, we just want y equals negative three, okay? And on this line, any coordinate point on this line, the y coordinate is negative three, okay? Vertical, well, x can be any number. I'm sorry, y can be any number, blah, 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 right? Y can be any number. I just want x to equal two. So when I pick any coordinate on this line, the x coordinate will be two. Okay, so you guys can, that's pretty straightforward, right? Okay, so um, I think that's pretty much it. Or do we have one more? We got one more problem. Now we're going to make it real. Okay, so let me, I need to do something here. Let me put this in a different view uh, right here. So um, the wind speed in miles per hour of a tropical storm is y equals 2x plus 66, where x is the number of hours after the storm enters the Gulf of Mexico. So that's an actual equation. Weather forecasters might use that. So we wanna graph the equation. So it's already been graphed over here, all right? But how did we do that? Well, you can see here, we picked four points on this one. Did you need four? No, you could have gotten away with three. Uh, three is probably the minimum. We substitute the values for x, and we figure out what y equals, and that gives us our coordinates. And then you just plot them, draw a line through them, okay? With that line, though, now we can start to answer other questions, like when does a storm become a hurricane? So if we look over here, we see uh, a tropical storm becomes a hurricane when wind speeds are at least 74 miles an hour. So on the vertical line here, these numbers represent wind speeds, okay? And, because that's what it says up here, Y is the wind speed in miles per hour, and X is the number of hours after the storm enters the Gulf of Mexico. So we wanna know, um, when does a, the storm become a hurricane? How many hours after it enters the Gulf of Mexico Will the wind speed be 74 miles per hour? Okay, so we can see that. I'll go back to that in a moment, uh, that other screen right here. Let me draw a point there. Let me put this point right here. Okay, it's hard to draw points on here. So I draw that point because that's where 74 is, all right? And then all we do is we go down here and we look at that. And we see that, well, uh, when does the storm become a hurricane? Well, it becomes a hurricane four hours after the storm enters the Gulf. Well, let's see if I use this. I'm using something different. Let's see if it, it does stay there. Nice. Okay, so there was the table. We plotted the ordered pairs. 
And then for part B, you can see that Y equals 74 when X equals four. So just like I said, so the storm becomes a hurricane four hours after it enters the Gulf of Mexico. All right. So do you have any questions for me? If you do, the video is gonna pause right now and you can ask them. And also tell me if this video was helpful or not. If it wasn't helpful, let me know because I wanna make them better, all right? So the video is gonna pause now. Okay, so hopefully you gave me some good feedback. And this is Mr. Odom, and you know what I'm gonna say, it's right there, I'm out. <laughs>